Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. My name is Eric. I'm joined by my co creator, co commentator, co caster, co compatriot, Rob Hello. on top here. And we didn't need to bring on a guest for this because this happens to be my list. <laughs> well, um, right, yeah. We, I, one of us performed <laughs> only, for the only first one time of us, in a while. <laughs> only, oh, <laughs> only <laughs> under the bus, why don't you? <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, I tend to like drop pretty early to play side events i'll go like three one drop it's kind of it's what i did in vegas it's pretty funny i, I get roasted and my yeah. locals roast me for that like every single time just like excellent dropping to play side I, events. yeah but... i actually did that in, in um barcelona i think i you wanted i wanted the sagrada token or a uh, promo so i was like three one you... calling i was like eh, i want to go do the no event. no 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 i remember that oh yeah yeah but i remember san jose where like you there was an issue with the signups and like half left. of us weren't in there <laughs> and you just literally like left and dropped the call. I went to get a coffee. Like, Holy moly. I yeah. was like, um, well, that's because my package, there was a glitch with my package. I had two for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then I saw I wasn't paired. And so I kind of figured, okay, there was a glitch. I'm not in the calling, whatever. I left, but it was actually an issue for everybody. And so they repaired yeah. everything an hour later I, and I was gone. Yeah. We, we digress here. So this is, this is my <laughs> KO list. Um, yeah. This is what I top forward with. Yes, yeah, so I'm V2, whatever. This is what I top forward with at the calling in LA earlier this week. Uh, I guess last weekend. Um, yeah. This was kind of chain. As there was a couple of iterations on this list. This is the one I ended up bringing. And a lot of the choices will. There are some probably more unique, quote unquote, unique cards. I know there was like four KO lists in PT. And then there was another KO list with me in top eight who got out in quarters, I think. But. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's all the all the differences between the KO list that I've seen are really just either personal preference or meta calls. So it's just like whatever you thought you'd see the most of. And <clears> I don't really like. I wouldn't particularly say in any one list I saw was like bad per se. It's just kind of whatever you saw and how yeah. well you played. Um, yeah. We're gonna start off with this. I guess. Huh, I guess I'll interview myself. Uh, why did I bring <laughs> KO? The questions um, are right streamlined, and plus you come up with the questions anyway, so you probably know what to say. <laughs> that's accurate. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. The thing is, I, I really, as weird as it sounds, I really don't think about the call. Like, I I kind of was just, like, in L.A. to, like, go for a vacation. A bunch of my locals went. Yeah, you know, and it's not so far from... Bubbles. It's closer no, to you than it is for me, right? So yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah all the all the Stroop, a lot of the Stroops were there. It, it, I was just going to, like, hang out with people and yeah. stuff like that. I wasn't thinking really too much about the meta and what here to pick. But I, I played some KO. I really honestly played... A lot of KO in limited, so I played a lot of limited because my roads were limited, oh, okay. or the ones yeah. I went to, yeah. and I ended up doing quite well in my limited roads. But that's kind of my practice. When I press practice for them, I kind of got a, you know, a bit of a anchoring for the KO here, a lot of mm -hmm. wind up and stuff like that. And I thought it was pretty interesting. I like his kind of value game plan that he has, like such a good kind of equipment suite for extracting value. And I think he has like probably some of the strongest equipment pieces in the game with flesh bag and uh, oh, yeah. Apex, pretty good. Yeah, this thing's um, amazing. Yeah, so I figured I, I'm I'm honestly not that much of a brute player, but I feel like this hero <laughs> kind of limits the brute aspect of brute compared I, to like Reinar. Maybe. Yeah, I do think this is the first uh, brute you've brought to a professional event. Ever. Oh yeah, oh hundred percent, oh yeah, hundred percent. No, no, no. I, I hate I hate it. I didn't hate brute. I just hated like some aspects of it. Like I didn't yeah, really the like RNG the RNG factor of having to roll scav skins or the intimidate, you know, yeah. the whiff on that. It's like there's a lot of yeah. risk or uh uh luck involved with playing Reiner. But well, yeah. I won't say luck. I know Clay would probably disagree with me, but uh you know, it is more on the RNG side of things rather than sure. some of the more traditional heroes like Guardian. Yeah, and I was pretty apprehensive about bringing this list to a calling or PT or just like LA in general, just because of like KO just seemed to have the biggest target on his back. Everyone and their dog was saying how this was just like the best deck. Um, <clears throat> you need to have like a good plan into this, blah, blah, blah. Like I, I kind of prefer to just play heroes that are either under the radar or just like I play yeah. them because I have reps in them anyways. But yeah. like for KO, I didn't really have that many reps before two weeks before the event where I was just like, okay, I got to pick a hero to practice and um, at least a little bit. Right. And KO was just kind of the one. Uh, so really kind of outside of my regular kind of mindset. I say that as I bring Lexi to the last call, like, and then mm -hmm. hold him to the one before that. But like, <laughs> let's ignore that. Let's ignore that for a second. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I think ko's place in the meta going in was still like it's a strong deck you need to pilot it extremely well everyone's gonna have a plan against you so yeah 
Yeah, you, it you was know, the most represented uh, deck, I think. I, I believe by the, quite a call, big margin. In the calling, it was definitely the most represented deck. But the, the calling, there was a lot. There was like 550 players, maybe 80 of them were KO day one. Uh, KO's conversion rates were actually pretty bad in the calling. Uh, compared to because there were so many of them probably because there were so many of them yeah. that's correct like like you see like katsu conversion day two and victor and stuff like yeah. that they were higher it's quite good um, yeah yeah and then pt you know there was quite a few also but yeah. uh, well i figure a lot um, of newer players probably gravitated towards him because he was kind of the meta pick right and they're not necessarily like hotness. amazing players so you know they just kind of you know want a deck to play at the calling ko seems easy to learn uh not easy to master, but easy to learn because it's it is kind of straightforward gameplay. But then if you look at it deeper, it gets more complicated. But at face value, yeah. he seems to be easy to pick up, and so just kind of yeah. that lack of experience with him led to a lower conversion rate, probably. Yeah, I would say that's that's probably fair because just being a specialist in KO doesn't really mean anything when the hero just came out. Like it's it's really getting 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 reps is one thing, but being able to like twist and turn with KO in the meta between different metas and like really learning the ins and outs is going to take a while. So I expect this year to still grow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we can kind of roll into the build here. So this is a pretty standard equipment suite on the top. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Yeah. I will kind of say that <clears throat> uh, uh, in a lot of the matchups, the, the ability to use fleshback properly, or at least attempt to use fleshback properly <laughs> is quite important. Key, keyword with, attempt. Um, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you. Sometimes it's more obvious. Got to try. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I think this piece of equipment literally saves you from ag like if this piece of equipment didn't exist, I don't think you can play this deck into like Katsu mm. and like aggro decks. It's just kind of kind of not impossible, just point. very very hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just very very difficult. I think that flesh bag is also very very important in the mirror against brutes in general and like big blood rush turns into Leviah, Reinar, mm -hmm. all the uh, KOs. Uh, very important to Katsu, came up quite a few times in my Katsu games, which I'll kind of talk about a little bit later. Do you, do you have a, and... a, a quick kind of tidbit on like when would be a good time to use this? Kind of just like a general rule of that you follow when you yeah. look at the um, Yeah, so I know a lot of a lot of people are kind of like they they tend to like praise people and s that hold this for later mm -hmm. and what i mean by this is like oh they're so disciplined they're so whatever <laughs> blah 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 blah, blah. Could and they're just like <laughs> flashback no like no not that but i, I saw yeah. i saw like one game where i think the cat like i was watching it like yesterday where the caster was like oh he's so disciplined saving this yeah. for later and then like 10 minutes later it's like oh it's a shame he had to use this <laughs> on such a mid league turn i'm just like what he could have used like, it I don't, better I'm early on yeah, to like extract, like, like I'll give you an example. It's just like, okay, Kasai is like blocking with two cards, has a point on Dynamo, and they're literally coming in with a swing. They're pitching, they have one card in hand. Mm -hmm. They have no go again. It's like, all right, you've got like a 95% of Blade Flurry coming on. It's like, if you block this, Intimidate Blade, not Blade Flurry, sorry, uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner, right? yeah. Uh, you block this, you're not only preventing the second swing for another two, assuming it's Centauri, you're preventing three, and you're preventing them from getting the, the Dynamo. Dynamo, right? which is basically one more point of damage. Exactly. So you've now prevented, what, three, four, five, six off Scowling Fleshback, and you're blocking twos. That's a Fleshback for eight? Like, yeah, yeah they get to Arsenal... They get to Arsenal Blade Runner, but it's just like, okay, you wait till later. Like, who's to say they don't just play around it? Like, if they now they have Blade Runner, now they have it in Arsenal. Yeah, okay, so now you couldn't play against it regardless because they have it in Arsenal. Like, <laughs> right. I, and you know I what it is? You can telegraph that, would... that that's a Blade Runner, basically. Yeah, like even like telegraph it. Like even if they if they're faking it, a skill, like, oh, whatever. You put it in yeah, Arsenal, yeah. whatever you have, you definitely don't have go again. So I think it's very. I think people might be a little disillusioned with with uh, waiting super for the, waiting the for like perfect, perfect moments. Like maybe there is no perfect yeah. moment because the opponent knows you have it. So you gotta pick a pick a time yeah. when it's like it's gonna be give and take at some point. I think you're not gonna get yeah. the perfect perfect flesh bag. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta take the moment when you can extract the maximum value. And I I think that I would take like a a medium a medium kind of risk level. And what I mean by that is like you don't want to sit there forever, but you also don't want to use it on like turns where you're just yeah. like <laughs> you're just trying to fifty fifty and hit it. It's just like yeah, yeah two, two block is not enough for this to be uh, good. You gotta get at least probably like four four or five in value for this card. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's correct. Okay, so I'll cool. talk a little bit about flashback later in matchups, but. Cool. Uh, bone breaker is a crazy ass card what a, what a stupid stupid arm please bone breaker, bone breaker uh, yeah. apex bone breaker yeah what a, so what a dumb arm three piece. three block plus two might tokens 
Yeah, it's a five five value. Mm -hmm. It's uh you know three three on the blood two and then one and then two my tokens. It's a three. It's a five value arm piece, which is just insane. Like I, I think what an upgrade um, from either gamblers, gamblers or iron rod. <laughs> or not even iron rod, but the, the other one that blocks one uh, Goliath or something. Not or even you can run like yeah, it's the one when you roll a dice and if you roll six, you get one extra damage on your attack, something like that. No, 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 not a crappy, crappy arm <laughs> piece. No, I'm just it's yeah. it's really it's really like he he doesn't need this kind of thing because he is losing his arm his arm quite literally, right? So mm. um, he needs he needs something to like accelerate the value game plan, and I think Apex Bonebreaker just extracts so much value just for like Bonebreaker block for three pitch C and C seven, yeah, seven seven power C and C arsenal of card pass. Like that's 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 a great mid-range value turn right? Right, right right um and a lot of games come a lot of the lower games come down to can you extract all the value off your flesh bag and or bone breaker and get all of your six power cards like cast bone blood rush uh and try to actually just out uh out damage their defense essentially and just like yeah. break through a kind of um break through their blocking so to speak right so I think those two are definitely the more important pieces. We could talk about the main deck as you kind of yeah, scroll I've down got it here. All here on screen. This is all the main deck right now. Yeah, I think I don't. I don't know if um, so. The way it looks on Fabry is a little weird. Like Cast Bones is not in every matchup, uh, even though it's oh, sitting I in see. the main deck. So we have forty-nine um, cards. So is the idea that you kind of yeah, have? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I take some of them out. I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't say okay. this is like gospel or something. That's just like so this is not the, the core that you run in every matchup, and you add eleven no. cards. It's like you, you can take no. cards out of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I have a sideboard. Like I, I put all the matchups in this particular Fabry link, which will be in the comments, so you can take nice. a look at them okay, good, yourself. Good. Um, but yeah. like we could talk about these these cards before. I think. Yeah. The obvious ones were just kind of like Bear Fangs, CNC. Oh, sorry, Bear Fangs Red, because people are running Yellow Bear Fangs. And and I'll talk uh, about the difference between my deck and some of the other top eight decks. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yeah. And the top eight Calling deck and the top eight PT decks. Um, I was only on Red Bear Fangs. I saw there were some lists on Yellow Bear Fangs, uh, either like two yellows and a red. I think Joel was on that, or mm. like just three yellows and no reds. Like one of the other PT players was on that it's it's so minor honestly it's it's yeah, the, the, yeah essentially the reasoning for the yellow bear fang is you could pitch the stack later so you can have like a bear fangs threat later because pitching a yellow still pays for all your two for sixes and it mm -hmm. pays for claw right so it's very easy to get the yellow bear fangs out of the hand and stack it for later like i and i get it like i i totally understand it was on my radar you can see at the very very bottom you can see my my um you have my, uh, uh no, no no very very bottom very very bottom very very bottom there you go maybe oh the, ma bear the fangs maybes i said basically yellow bear fangs in the maybes i yeah, thought about yeah, it yeah. i played i played around with it a little bit um mm -hmm. i just didn't want more no blocks yeah uh, in the deck i yeah. already have enough no blocks with wild rides and pulping that pulping, i didn't really ride. want yeah. more and i didn't really see the value of like trying to figure out if it was like one yellow two red or three yellow right. or like right it's all it's 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 so minor in my in my view that I just stuck with the three reds. You know, bread and butter cool. comes in for uh, two for eight, eight. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, CNC is obvious. Uh, yeah. I think you should buff the CNC board, with but... my tokens. Amazing. Yeah, runner uh, runner. Or very if you hard. could get a very good cast bones for plus six mm. CNC for twelve, why not? Yeah, yeah it does happen. Um, I yeah. think one thing that I was on before that I was playing around with was nine wind up. So like. Three blues, three mm -hmm. yellows, and three reds. Okay. Uh, some, some of my teammates, I believe, did run the strip waffles, did run the nine windups, Yuki and uh, Viet Fan. Uh, uh -huh. I believe they were on nine windups. Don't quote me on that. Uh, or they were at on at least eight red windups. And right, yeah. The, pro yeah, the problem with the red windups is they, like, oftentimes I didn't really have the ability to go wide enough on my big turns with, like, Blood Rush. Okay. That. I could just extract max value because the max value you can do yeah. off no blood rush is essentially you start with something like a wild ride. Uh, you pitch wild ride, you have like tunic up or something, then you pitch for claw and then you have a two, like a two for six. So it's essentially paying with two blues mm -hmm. for a two, two, two. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. kind of like what, what you aspire to do with wild rides in the deck. And if you want to go wind ups, then it has a lot more kind of view with, um, setting up wind up on their turn, so you like pits, you sack the wind up on their turn, have the agility, you have the tunic, 
then you use tunic pitch a blue and you can go two into two so you can go like swing mm. big into swing big or some right. shit like that would be crazy if you go swim and swimming very good turn yep. uh but something like a cnc into swing big or if you have runner runner that's like the most ideal turn where you right. essentially just you get the wind up on your turn you pitch a blue runner runner use the other floating in the tunic counter to like swing big like that's great that's yeah. great an agility hit you for 14 that's that's pretty na pretty nasty if you don't assuming you don't have a might right um so essentially those kind of uh m the more windups like the red windups allowed me to have more good three card hands with tunic right whereas the more wild rides i ran allowed me to have better four card hands with wild ride yeah is, is potentially, essentially the potentially get that wild ride claw into something else which would be pretty hard Correct. to do with the wind up being used in the previous turn, I assume. Correct. I also like wild. Uh, I also like wild ride better on the two card hands with tunic too. So essentially, you pitch a blue, you play red wild ride or yellow wild ride, you discard, gain, go again, tunic and claw, essentially, mm -hmm. right? So there's there's your off your tunic, you're able to essentially two card eight or two card nine. Assume again, assuming you don't have might. If you do have a might, it's like a yep. red. Or wild ride would be seven, so it'd be a two card ten with tunic, right? Yeah. So those are actually quite good, especially in the more aggressive matchups. If you do need to end up blocking, but you're still running like a couple wild rides, just because that's how the list was built. Um, maybe into like a semi, like an Azuri or something like that, where you happen to get disrupted or whatever, you could still come back with like pretty reasonable damage. That's like nothing to scoff at coming in for 10, just randomly off two cards, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think that was kind of the reason why I just like went off the red windups. I also wasn't on things like Massacre, where it's very good as a three card hand. So you essentially right. you discard the windup on your turn. What creates year? yes uh the oh, third card uh, yeah the massacre yeah, yeah the massacre yeah so essentially you discard the wind up and then your massacre is turned on and you pitch a blue play massacre and it comes in for eight intimidate um which is like the nice three card play that you can do with massacre agile mm -hmm. wind up and i think that made a lot more sense but the minute i kind of took out the wind ups and massacre they kind of go in a package so it was okay. very weird playing one not the other yeah so i decided to cut both of them that makes sense yeah did you find that you had enough agility tokens uh, to utilize yeah. runner runner with? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's also like even when I didn't have agility, it's just a two for six that says brute on it. Yeah. Like it did. It, it really like it's two for eight <laughs> on get, blood rush. Blo yeah, exactly. Blood rush buff. Yeah. Might it, token, it blocks. It blocks for three. You can block with apex like and get the might token. It's still like a two for six. Yeah. Like it's still it's it's baseline is very good. And its ceiling is even better. Like, a right. ceiling is insane, honestly. And so I would be very hard-pressed to not have this card in here. Yeah. Um, cool. And I didn't really feel like I needed even more agility. And cast bones, too, creates agility and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. that's those cards. So that's um, the front, you know, maybe front row talk here. Talk to me a bit about Reckless Swing. You have one in the main board. I assume that stays in everything, but... Yeah. Even, even yeah, even I don't have... Side, I guess. Blocks yeah, I don't have three. a I don't have a um I don't have a sideboard for blues. There's some decks that I think ran slightly more blues than me, or they ran a different suite of blues. I can talk about the blues because the yellows are very self-explanatory. Sure. Rush, um, beast within and wind up here. So yeah. the blues that I think have pretty much every deck ran more or less was the assault and batteries wind up riled up, uh, smash and stig and wrecker romp. Okay. Uh, I think the I ones that. Call. No, not all the about half the decks ran pack call. The, a lot of the other ones ran stuff like Blue Pound Town, or just like another three block that had like no text essentially. Okay. Um, and they ran various levels of Reckless Swing. I think there was some decks with two maybe, and then there was mm -hmm. one maybe one with one, and then um, some people ran zero. I think I'm not 100 yeah. sure. Don't quote me on that, but I know there were decks with two for sure. Um, okay. And you've got some Reckless on the side, Swing, right? Or you're not even, you just I've have got one. no blues. I don't have, I have no uh, blues. This, in this is the maybe. Okay, okay. So no sideboard yes. for blue. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Correct, correct. And this is when, like, it was always at two until the list got really, really tight. And I had to, like, reevaluate what exactly Reckless Swing was trying to accomplish here. And the first, the, there were two reasons. So the first one is I really love Reckless Swing into Guardian. Uh, mm -hmm. specifically in those long grindier games with Victor, I felt like Reckless Swing actually was doing a lot of work for me. I've like I think Yuki can attest to this too. Reckless Swing could just win you the game straight up uh, <laughs> later in the cycle, and that's happened to her, and it's happened to me too. We yep. we both did it, 
and neither and neither of us would ever cut this card. I, don't I think, think you can't um, play brute without that eventual threat of dealing two damage to win the game, right? That's just well, yeah. Given. And it's also the second thing is why did I run one? I ran it because of mental damage. You know, hear me out. This actually <laughs> yeah. worked in one of my rounds, so by you, the way. I'm, you I'm play, just, there's play one kind of, of them and then they assume you have more. Is that, yeah, is that it? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what ended up happening. And so I play the one and I pitched it. And my round three day two opponent uh, played around the second one because he thought I had a second one because <laughs> uh, I was like halfway into my deck. And so he didn't want to go to two. And then I ended up yep. uh, winning, not directly from that, but I think he, he might have been able to just kill me straight up if okay. he ignored. If he it just it just went to two. Yeah. Um, and so that was pretty fun. Now, to be fair, there were most decks were on two swings, I think. So I don't think right, it was so they, they didn't misplay by doing that, but no, they just it, made a decision. Your, and that's it. And to your advantage, you. You know, you're not you're not playing the second one, so it's basically they're giving you a freebie at that point. Yeah, not, not nice little psychic damage, you know. It doesn't yeah. hurt nobody. Well, that makes sense. Um, makes sense yeah. And it's still a very good card. Like it's it's um, the reason why I didn't really want to play the second is because I didn't think I needed more help in the matchups where it really uh, did actually go to like yeah. a more fatigue game state, like mainly guardian. I, I guess warrior. I never ran into like any of the great axe warrior. I think there were like a couple floating around that were at the high tables, like great axe warrior and shit like that. Yep. Um, <clears throat> the pack calls were like a last minute switch for me. Okay. Yeah. And they were fine. They I kind of had mixed mixed sentiment about them. So I think some of the other. I think about half the lists in the PT and calling combined had pack calls. So it wasn't it wasn't obviously just me. Yep. Um. But pack call is a is a weird card. So essentially, you reveal the top card. Usually, the misses in your deck are always going to be blood rush, and for me, yeah. that one reckless. So I have the four quote unquote misses. I don't really care if reckless goes to the bottom, but blood rush going to the bottom, not not amazing depending on on what's happening. So really, I have three always misses. Yeah. By always misses, I mean that I never usually want to see Blood Rush go into the bottom if no. I can help it. And Cast Bones um, also kind of hurts. Cast Bones actually depends. So Cast Bones is a great card, but sometimes you really do need to spike it early to do anything. And if you're trading uh, if you're trading blows in the mid game mm -hmm. and all you want is a hit off the top, right. Pack Call being able to put the Cast Bones to the bottom is actually not as bad as you would think because okay. you really do want that guaranteed hit for a Wild Ride, Pulping, or Bear Fangs, right? right. Uh, which I do have quite a few. I've run like nine of them in some matchups. So the, and that's kind of the reason I kept Pack Call in here, the reason why I swapped from... Uh, uh, Pound Town or uh, uh, Reincarnate, I think was the one I okay. swapped from. Yeah, that's the other one. Uh, which, which is just like a whatever card. It's fine. It's okay in random scenarios. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's probably the weakest it's not of the great. blues. Yeah. It's the, it's the weakest of the blues, and that's why I cut it, right? Um, so, the essentially, this did help me in some matchups. Like, I can't say it's a bad card. And what I mean by that is that exactly what i said would happen in the, in the matchups where uh -huh. i was just going on full wild ride package and i was just trying to go for those you know six three six yeah. three six turns yeah. um pack call just helps lower the variance with your top card and can save you a lot of damage right yeah absolutely um so it did work but it's also uh Part of the reason where part of the reason why i lost my semis was pack call uh, I um, just bottom blood rush i guess I bought him Blood Rush and I bought him Cast Bones against okay. against Dilks's Kasai, which is I, I think there were there were other issues with that match. Like he he had seed and he he went first, which was very good. He turned zero, nourishing me. Uh, oh, there were there were nice. other things with that yeah. matchup that were like just not going in my way. Yeah. Um, but I think Pack Call really did did me no favors there. Uh, but like that was kind of the only match where, and I'm happy that match happened later rather than sooner, right? So, of course. Yeah. Uh, and I think I probably like if I really was dialed in and wanted to play around it, I just don't block with pack call and just pitch with it instead. But it's like, I have two blocks instead of it. Yeah. It's like, okay, so you know what I mean? Like there's, there's like right. reasons, but in, yeah, that, in those particular scenarios, hands, it like, was like, yeah, if your hand didn't have like a, a wild ride or something, then you can consider not blocking with it to like, it only yeah. really helps on those turns where you plan to use the card on top of your deck for a discard. Uh, yeah. As opposed to, a random card that you just don't want to see a non six attack. It's like, well, you kind of do want to you see also, a non six attack. You want to see your blood rush. You want yeah. to see your cast bones. Yeah. yeah, it also helps with things like I have cast bones in my hand. 
So I block with pack mm. content, puts okay. a non six at the bottom. That's yeah. one less miss that I could have gotten, right? right. right. And that did, that also did happen once where I did pack call a second um, cast bones to the bottom of my dick, to the bottom of my deck here, and then yeah. was able to get the six on um, yeah, okay. so, on the cast bones, right? And that sense. was very very good. That was very very good. Um, cool. So you know, overall mixed mixed kind of sentiment about the card, but all right. Eh. Yeah, pretty good. good. Okay, so that's the side. So th that's just the main board. So then, uh, to talk to me about a little bit your strategy for side decking then, because you mentioned this is not the core. This is kind of just what you play most commonly. Oh, we could, we could talk about the side deck here. So the side yeah. deck, the inventory, sorry. The inventory here, correctly. yeah. So how, how do you organize this inventory then? Yeah, I do it by packages here. So okay. yeah, realistically, East Strike should be in the main, to be honest with you, but that's fine. <laughs> do, you, I, do you ever I, take I, it don't, out? Don't worry about it. <laughs> No, not really. Okay. I, again, just well, look like at the matchups. You'll have the guide in the yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's in sitting the in the, it's sitting in the matchups. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So essentially, the package was either uh, cl clash package was pretty common. So essentially, okay. I put in the clash of agility and the clash of might if cool. it was a matchup where I needed to block, and if it was a matchup that where I didn't really want to be blocking, I put in the wild rides and the pulping. Okay. Um. Yeah. And then the other cards were all tech. So by other cards, I mean no fear and send packing. I think East Strike was kind of always in. Okay. Uh, but the no fear and send packing did not come in all the time. Uh, they were definitely tech cards, and not in not in one of the aforementioned packages here. So I can talk a little bit about those. Yeah. Um, sure. The Clash of Agility, I think, is not not particularly spicy. I think there were other decks, not not all of them, but there were definitely a couple that were all in Clash of Agility. This is against decks the, like Warrior, where you're going to win Clash a lot. It's mm -hmm. pretty good into things like, um, sorry, uh, there's that. There's like Dromai. Mm -hmm. It was pretty, pretty okay. And it wasn't like amazing in Dromai, but they do have some attack actions that you can just clash and get some yep. good value. It's also just a popper in that matchup, which yep. is pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, but I think mainly it was into Ninja Warrior. So the decks where you probably it could end up blocking even even if you block early game or game or late game you are going to be blocking it came in other matchups too of course yeah. uh, i think it's coming into azuri too but we could talk about the sideboard a little bit later but th the point is that the agility generation from the clash of agility is in lieu of having things like extra windups right so yeah. If I was running nine windups, I might not have gone mm. with clash of agility right uh, the problem i was finding in a lot of my testing is that I had armor, but there was a lot of times where I really didn't want to take a shit ton of damage uh -huh. um, to try to get a big damage turn that didn't present any disruption, right? Because Gale really doesn't have a disruption other than C and C and send packing. And to be able to block with something like a class of agility bone breaker, create an agility and might uh, off uh, if, if you win a clash, assuming you win a clash, yep. uh, getting an agility might is just super, super strong, right? Because what you can do is stuff like with CMC your three card remainder. <laughs> Go again. Not even CMC for <laughs> yeah. seven, but if you like, let's say your three remaining cards is blue blood rush beast within, right? And then you're just you're just chilling, right? Because you just get to mm -hmm. uh blood rush, uh blood rush your beast within, draw three cards, one from beast within, two from blood rush, and you have two floating and agility. So you can like use two to swing big. If you have tunic, you could pitch a blue, come in for your other other piece, and yep. then yep. um it, it's it's chilling right like you're you're you're, you're having fun in that in yeah, that you game don't really play. need like a, you don't need like a starter cool. per se you don't have to claw first you can swing big yes. for nine go again or you can uh even better you can play savage feast so you can get an extra card so savage it, feast. A, yeah. a lot of yep. good stuff can happen from that yeah yep savage feast very very good card uh but very bad without agility like yeah. it's 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 of. a it's a whatever card until you have agility and so i really like to clash in those matchups actually pause, um, pause side note uh speaking about agility did you ever have to roll scav skins in your matchups do you even yeah. want to roll scav skins okay yeah 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 you, def you definitely yeah. rolled some of them in, in matchups okay. i could talk about a bit about scabs in, in the matchup specifics but sure, no, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll i'm just kind of curious because we talk about all, agi all these agilities yeah okay that's true cool uh, Clash of Might was my last tech card. So this was kind of the final slot. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted. The things that I was debating with was Clash of Might. I was debating between Pack Hunt. I think two Pack Hunts were in, in And I was on two Pack Hunts for quite a while, actually. You can probably see them down there. There you go. Two Pack Hunts. Yeah. Uh, possibly Massacres. Like all kinds of all kinds of random shit here. So 
I decided on Clash of Might mainly because of how much I liked it in the Warrior matchup. Hmm. And I had a feeling there would be a shit ton of Warrior at this of these events. And man, man, oh man, was I correct? Mm -hmm. There were Warriors left, right, and center. Yeah. And I really, really liked just extracting four value from Clash of Might, right? Because you four get three value. on the block. Yeah. You get three on the block. You can use it with Bonebreaker to get a second might if you want to, if you're just sure. like a sicko, right? <laughs> and you know what you're able to do is you're able to do something where you get to like lock with Clash of Might, Bonebreaker, create two mites, pitch to CNC, and they can't just give you two cards and dynamo, right? Because right. what happens right. is when you just get the one might token with like Bonebreaker, they just yeah. give you dynamo and two cards and that's it. Yep. But now my CNC is eight. <laughs> right. So you're going to have to give me more than just dynamo okay. and two cards. Right? Not bad, not bad. Yeah. It, it, it's, it sounds weird, but you'd be surprised on like how annoying dynamo is, which is hilarious because yeah. I opened one. My gold foil <laughs> Oh, the dynamo. gold foil. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah. So um, okay. it, it also like, there were also other matchups where Cast Clash of Might, like against uh, Katsu, it was actually quite good because uh, more likely than not, I do win clashes against Katsu. Yeah. And... <clears throat> any extra point of value because a lot of times your katsu games will go down to the wire like if you're both like just hitting each other and they get a good links off you and stuff like that you, your both life totals will be low and every point of damage matters every right. might matters and clash of might just being able to extract value whereas like if i had pack on that doesn't do shit to katsu intimidate a card i still come at you with everything right yeah so the matchups i was more scared of uh, were the ones where i felt like i needed to, a little bit more blocking value and a little more aggregate value on my card so i wanted more um more four plus values which was like clash of my agility mm -hmm. getting that extra token outside of the block value but yeah. also being able to if i draw it i can still do that um yeah. two for seven wild ride claw two for six or whatever right yeah. you know what i mean so i felt like this particular card was a meta choice based on my testing results cool. where i totally understand if people put in pack on and stuff like that instead yeah I think uh, this card makes more sense into the aggro matchups, like you said, the Katsus. But uh, yeah, Pack Hunt might be better into the more defensive decks if you want to have, you know, if you're against the Victor or something, or if Guardians start to really show up, it's like swap it out for a Pack 100, Hunt. 100, yeah. 100 percent. I think the and I'll talk a little bit about that in the matchup guide, but I think that's very, very meta dependent. Yep. What I was expecting in the meta, I preferred having Clash of Me, like Boost Dash, stuff like that. Like these, all these aggro yeah. decks or decks that want to hit you. Yeah. I just wanted to extract more value in the matchups because I thought they would go a little bit. In testing, they did go a little bit longer, right? So so I have those Clash of Mice in there. They did cool. quite well for me. Um, really not, not <laughs> a, um, not... Yeah, not, not I think two, I, th I think two was the right number too. I think three was okay. a good, would be a good overkill. Uh, e strikes. Uh, consider that a main board card. That card yeah. is nuts. It's really, really um, good in KO. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super good in KO. <clears throat> cool. Um, How about the non-blocking package? I guess. Yeah. So pulping was actually in most matchups. Okay. Um. So the reason is because dominate is just really strong, yeah. and when they're trying to block you out a lot to prevent like a lot of your big swings, <laughs> your swing bigs, mm -hmm. but but really like your big swings and damage. Um you needed some way to actually get your damage across, right? And so Dominate on the Pulping was pretty invaluable yeah. in not only the control matchups, but also, like, the mid range matchups. So, like, even in the, the KO Mirror, I found Pulping to be really, really good because in the late-game KO, it's really just two players at low life. And whoever is <laughs> yeah. able to draw more Pulpings and Swing Bigs will be the one winning the game, essentially, yeah. right? Or whoever's uh... able to keep, like, a two-card hand with, like, a blue and wild ride and be able yep. to be, like... Oh, I'm gonna six you, create a might, and three you. Like all of these cards that can gain go again, like wild ride and pulping, very very good for closing the game. Yeah. Uh, specifically pulping in the ones where they want to block more likely than not. So the exactly. ones with a lot of uh, three blocks like uh, KO pulping very good into Dromai. Um, not as a, not as an opener because they usually have D reacts in the arsenal. Like having right. them D reacts in the arsenal is not that un uncommon. Yeah. Uh, but you could just run pulping with an agility and then it'll just have go again right you don't have right, to right. you don't have to worry about that there's, yeah. there's no there's nothing there's nothing in the rule book saying you have exactly. to you know you use a, a non this can gain go again card on your agility right you can use it with wild ride and pulping especially pulping i feel like just just read it as dominate like you don't have to read it as go yeah. again and that's kind of how i was able to yeah move around those matchups. So I think K Pulping comes in quite a bit. KO especially can benefit from Dominate because of the might tokens he generates. Just mm -hmm. 
just passively, right? So uh, yep. Dominate plus Might Token is really, really good. If you can get a really good cast bonus with a Pulping for 12 Dominate, that's amazing. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. That's very, very good. Um, and that that did happen in one of my games where I like cast bones and started with a pulping for like. That was sick. I think I, I think it was like a mighty wind up cast bone, so it was like eight. No, it was like seven. Is seven might, so it came in for like thirteen go again. <laughs> dominate, which is like yeah. pretty pretty good way of uh, closing a game. Um, way of opening a game too. <laughs> a good way of opening a yeah. game too, and that's that's the other thing. That's the other thing that pulping is a really good turn zero play. Like you get free damage oh, yeah. with dominate. So I think people are forgetting that like pulping was like scary for a lot of different reasons. Closing and opening with this card is really, really good. So Absolutely. I think pulping is just kind of always in here. I did see people running yellow pulping. I did see some mm -hmm. decks running yellow pulping. I don't know if they were in top. I don't know if those decks topped specifically. Uh, I I think that's too wild for me. Yeah. Uh, I think yellow pulping is. I understand the theory again. You pitch a yellow, you can stack it for later, and it's a dominant. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like the late, it's the late game mentality of like if you think there's a bunch of control decks, yeah, and you have yellow pulping late game, very very good because like there's more likely than not they will probably have used most if not all of their D reacts in the first half of the game if they can draw them right. because you're like blood rush cast boning them, and so yeah. when you're closing out the games pitching those yellow pulpings, they'll just come up, they'll come back up, and they'll you know have they'll dominate and can probably have a finish the game yeah and I, I see a choice was made to use three wild rides instead of three pulpings and the, the yellow sorry three yellow wild rides instead mm -hmm. of the, the three yellow pulpings is that kind of a meta call to say like i'm probably going to be like stomped with a d-react on my pulping so i want to get a guaranteed yeah. go again source yeah yeah that's that's my, that's mainly correct that was mainly the, the frame of mind i think okay. wild ride is i think it's, it's i safer. saw six wild rides yeah i saw six wild rides in one or two of the other decks i think uh, the yellow is good for that reason, that pitch stacky kind of reason. Not pitch stack, but like second the cycle. Second cycle. Um, yeah, second cycle, and it's also just like still fine on blood rush turns. Uh, there were some matchups where I ran yellow or red. I didn't necessarily run both, mm -hmm. and so depending if I depending how fast I thought the game was gonna be, I either ran the reds or the yellows. Mm -hmm. uh, reds if I thought it was gonna be faster, yellows if I thought it was gonna be slower. Um, and it, it it generally wild ride was one of the best cards in the deck for okay. my for the weekend for all for all my swiss games wild ride was one of the best cards of the deck because it again it enabled that i'm gonna say this a lot it enabled that six three six that seven three six like it enabled those hands where you don't need to roll scabs to have if you get a really awkward hand it yep. just enables so many things it gets you your mic token it's super super good on blood rush turns which is very important to right. get as many three attack turns on blood rush if you can because the number of one for sixes you can have in your mm -hmm. deck because that's what blood rush is on three attacks yep. um <laughs> the more likely you win the game shocker i know it's very very good, surprising good blood to rush this. turn wins the game yeah it's i'm, no I'm shocking the world i'm shocking the yeah. world with this one but uh, that, that so i felt like wild ride yeah. yeah and uh, the scent packings uh they were in they were out they were sideways right. uh ultimately i put two back in the deck i was running three then i was running zero then i uh, went back to two okay. uh, i think i think the azalea matchup was doomed without these cards it was okay. one of the big reasons i put it back in i think katsu is also very the scent packing is very good into katsu um and there's like side points to other cards i think it's good into bolton i think it's good into dash like boost dash uh, so it definitely has its uses. It's a three block at six, turns on apex. Okay. I, I think, honestly, depending on the meta call, I might have wanted to just put this to three. I think two, like it worked for me, but like I could totally see this going to three in later builds. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there were PT builds on three. I think a lot of them just had send packing on three, which I totally get. It was just a choice I made. Um, but I. This card didn't do enough in some of the matchups I was more worried about. Things like I okay. thought Dromai would come out here. Sun packing not doesn't do really that much into Dromai, in my opinion. Um, and there were there were a couple other matchups where I was just like, yeah, it's it it's fine, but right. at least it pitches it, yellow. At least it's two. It pitches yellow. Yeah. yeah. So honestly, I put it to three just because of how important it is, is against Ninja, which I feel like is becoming more and more prevalent. Yep. Uh, especially the calling, it was it had a very good conversion rate into day two, and and there was one in the top eight. Yeah. Um, in the calling, so I feel like I'd probably be on three cent packings in a later build, mm. but a very very good card, obviously, and it's yeah. a brute card, so it's two for six on blood rush with disruption, which is like, I don't know, kind of nuts, right? So yeah, very good card. 
Awesome. Um, All right. No Do you fear? want to talk about No Fear? Yeah. What's up with this card? What a polarizing KO. card. I see okay, people KO. on like, yeah, like I, I saw people on like none of these, three of these, two of these. I don't think anybody really has a good grasp on what this card, how this good right. this card can be. Uh, I ran it, and I'll cycle a, bit this, a, a little bit about this on the matchup portion for the matchups that died, and I'm going over specifically, but yes, Kano. That's a very big one. Yeah. Uh, you can listen to any Kano talk about this card. Super annoying. You spindle them for five, you no fear for five, no opt for you. You try right. to um, you try to combo off on them, and essentially it's like, yeah, you no fear their... Um, first of all, no fear gets around all red hands, right? So... If you draw an all red hand, True. Yeah. you can at least get um, value <laughs> off of them for no fear, right? Like you yeah. use put it into that because if you start hitching, like it, you can start playing mind games with them, right? So let's say you no fear and then you you banish three cards, like three red cards, and you block for five, and they think you have like a red left or whatever, but it's <laughs> blue. Yeah, like you could really psych them out with that kind of stuff. Mm. You'd be surprised if they try to combo off on you and you have like I run spell void one. So then I pitch a right. blue and then yeah. spell void one and I block their second wildfire for four and then the no fear covers the other wildfire. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's yeah. very, very good in that matchup. I think it's also good into Dawnblade Dory. Oh, okay. um, yeah. It's also good into Azalea. And and those, those are kind of the big matchups where so I thought it Dawn was. Dawnblade Dory because it turns off Reprise or just because it can shut down a it, Dawnblade? Both, right? Like it doesn't turn on Reprise. It... But mainly the other part, it doesn't turn on reprise, and it lets you keep your hand to swing back. So mm -hmm. you don't actually lose any tempo if you're hitting them. And that's that's the piece against Azalea and Dory, whereas No Fear was just ah. like, oh, I'm just blocking your shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Azalea Dory in, in my testing was like, oh, I get to block Dominate, or Azalea's case, Dominate. Sometimes for Iron Song Determination, Dominate <laughs> also on Dory. True. You get to yeah. get around Dominate. And I still get to have a hand. Like, yeah. that's kind of nuts, right? Now, you know, Course of Iron Song, there's cards against that can, like, target uh, target damage prevention, sure, but they have to have it when you know fear, and they might not even be running it in the first place. But yeah. Yeah. the you no know, fear did some very, very good things for me in, in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I will say that I was quite happy with no fear, and I thought, okay. um, thought it was probably one of the better cards on the day. Now, admittedly, I didn't play into any Azaleas. However, so that's mainly from testing. But I did play into other matchups. Uh, Kano, I definitely did play into. And I mm. did no fear them. It was very, very good. Nice. Um, but yeah, I, I might consider moving this to two. It was really depending on the meta. Because I thought there would be a shit ton of Kanos, which there were quite a few Kanos, like 30 Kanos in the calling day one, which is a lot of Kanos, like 10%. Yeah. Of, no, yeah. Like 7 8% of the field, which is more Kanos than there's ever been, I think. So. I think so. I'm I'm happy with this pick. I thought it was fine. I think protecting myself against specifically Azalea was such a bad matchup yeah. for KO. I thought it was fine. Um, awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the equipment here. I was on yeah, AB3 you... spell void one. Yeah, you did I mention think... the spell freight gloves here. Very nice. <laughs> now, yeah. Now I think that um, people were like pretty surprised on the day that people were packing this. And then you look at like all the PT lists that are just like, yeah, they all have spell void one. And in <laughs> some slot, like it wasn't really a secret. Right. And Kano, Kano was not a pick this event that people were surprised to see. So a lot of decks were prepped for Kano, right. yeah. uh, including mine. So I was pretty confident to KO uh, that sideboard list you see right there, cross strap boots, uh, skull horn gloves. Yep. That's exactly what I brought into Kano. Okay. Very, very good. Um, and that that's that's just it's enough just, said i just, guess yeah this is just what you i need. don't know what to say yeah. ab3 spell void one uh cross draw specifically <laughs> i do bring into other matchups yeah. but i can talk a little bit about that when we go over the matchups very briefly here um uh, cool. but that did okay. come up more into like the, the aggro matchups that i thought would be over very quickly things like katsu i brought it into or decks yeah. where i wanted to if i want to block with two cards hot cross trap also enables you to go for much wider blood rush turns if you miss on the resources oh, yeah um because Cross strap can at its high point equal eight damage off bear fangs or swing. Bait, okay. Yeah. Right. So it allows you to, if you absolutely have to block with three cards, for instance, you block with three cards, get nine value, and then your cross strap comes in for eight value off the attack. You're now your your turn cycle value is seventeen. Yeah. Nine plus eight. That's insane. Right? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's insanely good. Right. Um and the problem with a lot of those matchups is that if you absolutely had to block, your turn was just off. You know what I mean? So yeah. 
And I think Tunic was either too slow or it was just like, okay, but it's just only one resource. And it's like, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not good. Yeah. In the slower matchups and mid-range matchups, obviously Tunic is better because uh, you can get that value off your claw uh, or off like another two for whatever if you only have a blue pitch, right? Okay. Makes sense. Um, okay. I let's guess talk a little bit. Sideboard about... versus matchups, I guess the, the matchups you faced maybe or any matchups yeah, you want to so... talk about in particular. So yeah, let's scroll up to the top here. Um, I faced. Um, why don't you just click the default matchup, like right at the very top, next to latest version, oh. the drop down menu there. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Right at the top. Yeah, so I oh, faced. It's all here. Cool. Yeah, I faced uh, Dash IO, Dory, Dromai. You don't have to click mm. them all. I just have to remind myself. Sure, Dash sure. IO, Dory, Dromai, Phi, Kano, Kasai, Kasu, Levaya, <laughs> Prism, and Azuri. So I faced like okay. everyone under the sun. It yeah, feels like I faced like half spread. the matchups here. Wow. Yeah, uh, scroll down for a sec. Did I face any uh, and a victor? Any I faced a victor. Okay, yeah, yeah my, I faced two victors. So nice. I faced a lot, and that's that's kind of oh, and a prism. I played a prism too. My, there's a lot of rounds. It's thirteen rounds. Thirteen rounds. Right, so right. That's my top eight. Top eight. Top four games. So right. Two so more rounds. So fifteen in total. Fifteen games I played over two days. So mm. that is kind of why this calling was kind of really hard to prep for as like one of the hardest callings ever in my opinion to prep for because literally it's so open and yeah. there's no big diff deck and it's i don't i don't know man this was a very i think everyone in the pt and, and they, everyone in the calling couldn't understand it be like okay yeah how do you how do you prep for this like how do you like you can't play matchups into every you can't play games into every single matchup you can't like yeah. focus on anything so and and it proved it i think everyone in the calling i only saw like one or two decks twice, and every every other game was like a, except for Katsu. I faced three Katsus in a row day two, which was kind of wild. Right. Um, so we could talk about the matchup spread that I have in the matchup guide, uh, whether or not I the plans I had, and then whether or not I faced them. Right. So let's go to the default matchup in the drop down menu here. Sounds good. Let's start with Azalea because I think Azalea is one of Ko's worst matchups by far. Uh, Azalea just has the ability to make your turns do nothing a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fatigue shots right in the ledger. Um, the Judge Jury's Judge Judy is pretty good. Judge Judy, yeah. Uh, Judge Judy. Um, she has sleep darts really good because then your fives are not sixes. It turns off like wild ride yeah, stuff that's like huge. that will never. Yeah. Um, doesn't turn it off, but you know what I mean. Yep. So. I ran some... cross trap into this. Okay, yeah. Uh, I ran cross trap into the matchup because the matchup can actually go pretty quickly, and a lot of the times, if if they don't dominate, uh, my turn can just be blocked with three cards and armor, and then use cross trap to come back for eight, and it's quite good, right? It's it's quite powerful. Uh, I can come back with cross trap CNC that came up yeah. a couple times in testing, which kind of just like if I have a mic token before and I just I I literally have CNC. I like cross trap CNC for seven, and you just like. Yeah, there's there's some times where you just take a card and then just refill it and draw a card, but like at least you have disruption uh, against right. a deck that really doesn't like blocking if they can help it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I ran Clash Package because again, as I yep. described, uh, it is an aggressive matchup where I do need to block. They have a lot of very good on hits that really shit on me. Mm -hmm. uh, and Clash with Mike, Clash with Julie, you'll generally win. Like the best thing they have is like Battering Bolt if they're running it, which is a six yep. power, but they usually don't run that into you, so it's usually a five power. Right. There are no attacks in your deck that are lower than six power because of KO. <laughs> like the lowest is going to be a six power, so you'll yeah. generally always hit clashes if you can reveal an attack action. Yep. Um, and I ran three the, no fears. No fears too. Yep. 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 Uh, I mean, the nice thing about Azalea is that Merkmire does stop prevention, but you know they're firing Merkmire, so you don't have to run no have fear to. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Dory. It's attack reaction, so they can chorus in response right. to your no fear, right? And because it's it's all at the same speed, right? It's just speed attack reaction. It's exactly. all the same speed here. Exactly. Um, so if you give them a chance to respond, they will. So there's no fear. There's two cent packings, of course. I kind of mentioned before. Oh yeah, just some disruption. Uh, yeah, just some disruption. I did run pulping to try to like finish the game, like dominate, go again on the wider turns. Because uh, sometimes in the late game, you do have to break through. Uh, runner, runner. Uh, I only had one in there just because, like, it's very unlikely you get to keep big hands to make use of this <laughs> yeah, card. Right, it's still yeah. a, it is a three, a three block, six power. Yeah, and who knows? Uh, they might break on a, on a turn, and then you can just use it yeah. uh, very effectively. Yeah. 
Or you cool. just have Clash of Agility, you win a Clash, and you get to run a runner. Yeah. But, like, that's kind of, yeah. Cool. So, all right, going down... Yeah. What else did I have? Anything the blue, else crazy The blue package, here? I think this is all pretty standard Yeah, not, here, nothing so else crazy. So, that's, really so that's, that's, the, that's, that's the Azealia matchup. What do you, you, you're trying to just, like, literally block out. They will, if they have a brick turn, you can get back yeah. tempo. Still a very difficult matchup. Cool. Uh, if they hit you with, like, Rabble and E-Strike, try to find a point where you can scowling them. That's the only point where okay. scowling is relevant. Yep. Um, and sense. then try to no fear and grab tempo back. Because no fear is literally your win con. Like, you no fear them, and you blank an arrow, uh, and you're able to come back with serious damage or a blood rush turn. That's how you win that matchup, essentially. Mm. Awesome. That's Celia. All right. And you didn't see any in your nope. 15 matches. Okay. <laughs> nope. Right. I, I tested into it. Uh, Who's we're next? gonna skip Bolton. Uh, we could go Bravo, I guess. I didn't see any Bravos, but it's sure. It's honestly a pretty. It's a pretty simple matchup, and I think uh, my teammate Alan, Alan Huang, Alan Luber, Lu Razor Lubers will uh -huh. kind of test this matchup being like pretty difficult. Okay. Uh, and for good reason. Like, so you can run uh, no fears in the matchup, which is kind of crazy mm -hmm. because how they yeah. win is through dominate, which is pretty fun. Like they dominate disruption. Because if they just hit you with like Crippling Crush, you have so much two block armor, where yeah. you just like give them two three blocks and an uh, armor, yeah. and then their their undominated Crippling doesn't do anything, and you still come back for eight. Like your value game is just so strong. Like yeah. you're, that's still a that's still a fourteen damage cycle turn. So it's a four card, three three block for six total. You use, use the armor of course, and then you come in with like swing big for eight. So it's eight plus six. Still very like Bravo can't really do like yeah you have like Rouse Hammer on some turns if you hit it. And for 13 value, but you know what I mean? Like, the value proposition just isn't there for Bravo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm able to run such, like, shit like Wild Ride because I have no fear. Mm -hmm. So I can still come back with, like, insanely good value turns. Yeah. Uh, send packing just it's a couple two, a couple three blocks. I have 63 in the deck just because hmm. some Bravos tend to, like, run you out of cards yeah. if they happen to run really, really hot. So I have three extra cards in there that just happen to be there. I, I think you can run a clean 60 if you want. Um mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much it for the Bravo okay. side. Standard board. equips, nothing's changed here. I think this is yeah. it's the same equipment besides Kano, right? You never really swap anything out. I guess Viscera. Oh, Hard and Cross Trap. Uh, oh, Hard and Cross, sorry, yeah. Hard and Cross Trap. Vincent, yeah, Vincent, and, Viscera, Vincent, stuff like yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right, who's uh, next? Dory. Dory. Yeah, this matchup sucks. Clash Pack. <laughs> Did you yeah, face, you face the Dory, right? Yeah, I placed a Dory, but I didn't actually run uh, No Fear. I actually ran this list, which is on Cast Bones. So mm. you, un unfortunately, unless you know, so No Fear is so bad into hatchets that. Mm. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I guess you got to make the call before seeing. <laughs> I had I had a weird call on mine, unless I knew the player. So on day two, if I saw Dory, I assumed hatchets because I actually mm. I was able to count the number of Dories. Okay. Uh, and I kind of got some good scouting because I was like running around to the different top tables <laughs> and looking at what these Dorys were playing. A lot of them were on hatchets or like dual wield or whatever. Okay. Not many Dawn Blades made it to day two. Okay. So on day one, I decided to just run. Um, just the cast bones. But I, I, yeah, oh. you could run the cast. You, you ran, you ran no, no fear, fear, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can run no fear if you know they're on Dawn Blade and essentially cast bones if you think they're on dual wield. Okay. And the reason is because no fear is really, really shit into hatchets, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but realistically, I, I don't think no fear is absolutely required for the matchup, and even into Dawnblade, mm -hmm. uh, they still have to have like pretty decent hands, and overall, you can still provide quite a bit of damage. Uh, this matchup is weird. I have Clash package and I have Wild Ride. Uh, um, right, it's a bit it, of a hybrid, least... <laughs> or like just uh, every, yeah, everything really, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't. So I'm essentially I'm not running runner runner, uh, okay. in, into this matchup only because I, I found that in testing I wasn't able to get agilities all so often and I wanted to maximize my okay. chance of going uh six three six again. I said I was do it a lot yep. or seven three six or whatever magic number. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of relied on clash, which you generally just always hit, uh, and wild ride because I feel like if you just end up blocking a lot, you're playing Dory's game essentially. The more you just try to predict blocking you're playing her game plan whereas yeah. in general you what you can do is you can just throw six armor with flesh bag and stop a turn for like dawn blade right like if they dawn yeah. blade you 
uh, for three with nothing, you just literally like throw six armor with yeah. your arms. Like, don't worry about the value off the, the arms. It doesn't really matter <laughs> in that matchup. Right, you just right. throw the arms, boots, and flesh bag. You take something, and like maybe they have a one for three pump, but no reprise. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. In general, it's okay. Yeah, you, like you get tw you can get twinning blowed out like by anybody, but like realistically speaking, that's generally enough. And then you just like start running at them, and like yeah. they yeah, they have armor, but like they don't have infinite dynamo block like the the one handed builds, right? So yeah. yep. I didn't really see that as much of a problem. Cool. Uh, so I just ran cast bones because without cast bones, you're not going to beat Axe story. There's no way. There's there's literally no hope if you don't if you don't run cast bones. Gotcha. Neat. Mm, All right. Yeah. Anything That's else about, about Dory? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Bad matchup, but you know but you, make you could probably make it better. Yeah. Yeah. Make do. Uh, we could go Dromai. That was sure. a matchup that it's probably I did really play. Relevant. Yeah, I played this twice. Uh, I was one one. So one of my losses in Swiss was Dromai. Okay. Uh, match eight against Lucas, one of my locals, who's a very, very, very good oh, yeah. Dromai player. I remember him. Um, my deck just happened to explode in a bad way <laughs> that game. <laughs> I think I blood rushed twice, and the only thing I could do was swing big for eleven pass. It was Ooh. really, really depressing. Yeah, it was yeah. really bad. Um, it happens. Yeah. But yeah, it, it does happen. But uh, and it was still a pretty close game. But the second game I did win um, in day two. And that was a function of just running real fast with Wild Ride. And man, <laughs> oh man, is this is this the way you win this matchup? MVP so, card on the day. In this matchup, yeah, yeah. In this matchup specifically, <clears throat> the, the six Wild Ride package is literally you just... The way you beat Dromai is you don't let her... Like, you make her decide between taking a shit ton of damage to develop board or... Uh, well, okay, that's that's really the way you win. You you make her take a shit ton of damage if she wants to develop <laughs> board, and you just keep hammering her. Yeah. The minute you start playing her game plan, you slow it down, you hit dragons here or there. Yeah. The only dragons you should really be afraid of is like Chromai on Dust, uh, mm -hmm. possibly like Mirror Guy, stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Um, but if you just like, or you try to hit like a like a passing Mirage on the on the swing back, right, something like right. that, like you do something with agility and then claw into a passing Mirage mm -hmm. pass, that's fine. Yep. But in general, just try to hit him. Hit him real, real hard. And okay. that's a much easier way of winning. Now, Dromai is probably going to LL soon, so this might not matter, but... <laughs> that's fair, yeah. You know, that's true. That was well, that was this matchup here. Hopefully someone uses this uh, information. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, and... Katsu, I played three games into oh, Katsu. Katsu. So let's talk about this stupid yeah, matchup. Yeah, sure. Is also not a fun matchup. It's so a tough, tough one. Generally for Brood, I think, is, is uh, yeah. a bit of a tricky yeah, yeah. one. I, I played Katsu round 9, 10, and 11. I played Katsu. Wow. That must have been um, fun. <laughs> no, it stressed the shit out of me. Yeah. But I won them all. But it, it was oh, very, nice. very You're, you're 3-0 into Katsu with this deck. I am 3-0 into Katsu's, okay, that's but... that's very impressive. Okay, that's, that's, it's, what are your secrets? It is nail... Uh, the secret is to, like, block... Like... <laughs> it's weird. It's, like, block correctly, but it's very hard for me to yeah. say that out loud, right? Because yeah. it's just like, what does yeah. that mean? Just be good. <laughs> uh, I, no, 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 no. You don't have to be good. You just have to be lucky. Mm -hmm. um, just know when they want so to use Katsu trigger, I guess. When... On the top there, you'll see I'm on cross strap in this matchup, which I kind of mentioned ah, beforehand. Yes, yes. Um, they want to race you. They want to combo you out and just like bring you low real quick. The longer the game goes out, the better it is for you. Uh, cause Kadachi don't do nearly as much cause you're, they're not running mask and momentum in this matchup. So uh, okay. one of them did, but like the harder games were the ones, the guys who didn't run it. Yeah. Uh, those were the harder games, I think, but okay. The idea is to get value on your blocks. Generally, what you're going to want to do a two card block, so like a piece of equipment and a card, and that's it, right? So things like Clash of Agility and uh, Bone Breaker on like a Surging Strike, something like that, or like a right. Whelming Gust Waves. So the options are kind of like if they start with Surging Strike, mm -hmm. uh, you have to either block the Surging and commit, or let them get the Whelming and block the Whelming, mm -hmm. right? The issue that I find is that if you let them get the whelming, you also let them katsu. So if they have the whelming, they get bonds, and you're just kind of screwed. Okay. Um, yeah, you mean so what I ended surging, up, right? If you give them the surging, yeah, if you give them the surging hit, and they have whelming, they grab the bonds, okay. and it's really really awkward. Yeah. Um, and then use of flesh bag is very important. So True. when they're keeping big hands to throw back at you. 
you really do have to like flesh bag earlier rather than later. Right. Right. So what I mean is that a lot of the times I ended up flesh bagging a surging strike. And okay. the reason I do that is because even on a yellow even on a yellow surging strike, I block for five with flesh bag. And the reason I do that is A, you don't get blown out by ancestral because their um their arm piece doesn't hit breaking skills doesn't hit uh non combos, combo only. Right. So they can't buff it other than ancestral. Very unlikely they have double ancestral in their hand. If they do, you just you, yep. but you can hit one with flesh bag. You can hit one with flesh bag. Easy, easy true, game. True, you know true, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um six to percent chance. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, okay, well, if they're keeping a hand to throw whelming back, it's like, yeah, so you give them like flesh bag in a card, it's like, okay, you can give them like scabs in another card. Then that's another five block on their four, and then they can't they can't get over that with just the arms, right? So it's really just like selectively blocking plus one, even on the surging strike sometimes okay. is necessary. Yeah. Uh, and my secret weapon that's not so secret anymore, I run two no fears in this matchup, which actually are pretty okay. funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a it's just a funny card because like nobody expects no fear when they breaking scales. So it's just yes. like <laughs> that's true. You, but you've already like, committed block. I guess you just don't bash anything with no fear. You just kind of play it for. Yeah, two. it's just two prevention. Yeah. yeah, it's just two prevention. It's just like they don't have flick knives to get around this or anything right, like this, right, right. right? So you no fear, and you could be preventing a lot because all Katsu need is one hit to go like bananas. B a n a n a s, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem, right? You want to try to avoid that, and it's it's also funny because, um. If they don't have that big of a hand, it is also possible to just give more cards to No Fear and just you just come back with like a full Blood Rush hand or something. Yeah. Um, and it's actually like pretty reasonable. Uh, what else did I run here? Uh, send packings. Ooh. Wild Rider ran the two yellows just because they're still two pitch. Yep. Um, I need to get to 60. The rest of the cards don't block. I don't run Cast Bones in the matchup because it's bad. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it'll slow it. Yeah, uh, way too slow. Yeah. Like you're not, you, know, you can high roll them turn zero, but you can also just not have it and you just have a shitty three block when you need uh -huh. something to hit for like um also you could draw like cast bows no fear that you just like kill literally oh, can't even yeah. fear it into yeah that's uh, right. usually you just block with cast bones and then no fear or whatever but yeah i, I didn't i don't know cast bones to match up but that, that was katsu cool yeah very impressive that you beat every katsu you faced yeah so very valuable information for that one uh um, what else and you talked Zuri? about uh a bunch of victors but yeah let's do this very nice mm. all right i don't Oh, was this actually how I sided into Azuri? I think I might have changed the sideboard last minute. Yeah, so I actually changed this. I'll change this on the list before this goes out. Okay. Um, but essentially, the I ran the cast bone, I think, as a hedge of, hedge into contract Azuri. Uh, I think, in hindsight, that's fine, but I don't think I saw any contract Azuris like, in any of the tables. Um, so I, I don't really think cast bones is necessary. Azuri doesn't have enough block on her armor nor nor is her deck really designed to be super yeah. fatigue yeah. uh not fatigue you know what i mean like it's not really designed to withstand that much of a beating because you, you just don't have armor game. yeah yeah you just don't have armor you have balance sure but you have like one armor on your uh arms which you don't want to block with because of flick knives and you have one armor in your legs right. and you have tunic like it's she, she doesn't block that well and then a lot of her aggressive cards like death touch uh, -huh. uh looking for a scrap cards like that block for two like she has a bunch of two blocks yeah she has d-reacts and stuff but not very defensive usually more of a um a value generation on like a two card hand sometimes you go wide with looking for a scrap and stuff but yeah, yeah. i don't feel i don't feel cast bones is needed in this matchup that was just a bit of a hedge okay uh i run the clash package because i do block in this matchup's pretty good uh the mvp in this matchup is beast within what a oh, okay. good card in this matchup think about it they codex yeah. you, you discard Beast Within, draw a card. Uh -huh. Hog. That's true. You, That's true. You one, pick. one game, one game in day two. I, I put I shoved this in the arsenal and I was I was just like uh, it was my trap card. Uh, I Yu-Gi-Oh'd them. It was yeah, my trap yeah. cards. So they see and see my beast with it. I drew a card and came back for a shit ton of damage. That's that was pretty pog. Funny. <laughs> that was pog. It's a good way to um, use it. Yeah. M MVP in this matchup because okay, if they leave no witnesses, you're, you're screwed because it goes to the banish. But if they see and see it, or if they codex you, yeah, yeah, and they're like they play around the fact that you have one less card for blocking, but then you show the beast with it, and you're like, uh, ah, and yeah. their entire plan kind of goes to shambles. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, 
So I run the Clash Package that I run the Red Wild Rise because it's more of a... I don't think this matchup goes to second cycle very often. And if it does, it's because I'm running very fast, not because I'm pitch stacking something. Right. Uh, so I want the seven power on my Wild Rise with the Might. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's awkward for them to block. If they want to fully block, they have to give me a D-React, which is something I'm totally okay with on Wild Ride. Yeah. Um, so that's why I run the reds in that matchup. What about the uh, cast bones? So what did you take out? I, would you would you put in? Would you put in for a cast bones? Because you, you probably. Uh, I think I put a runner runner instead. Okay, one copy just in case. Uh, which? Yeah. because yeah, you can clash with agility. You can add, yeah. you still have nine sources of um, like agility. Uh, agility. You can clash yeah. and wind up. Yeah, okay. and wind up. So I just run another three block. It's totally cool. reasonable. All right. Uh, a couple is more. There anything else? I mean, there yeah, is, there is, uh, if you want to just end on Victor or if you want to talk about anything else, but we got at least Victor, Victor is not, Victor is not particularly complicated. I'll, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to people's imagination. Okay. You just outvalue, you just outvalue them most of the time. Perfect. Um, yeah. Any, anybody else here? We can, I played into Kasai and semis, but I, I don't, it's really not that different from like Axe Dory. The matchup is really kind of the same. What um, about, um, you mentioned one prism. Was that complicated at all or? I played Prism. We could talk about Prism. We'll end on Prism. Sure. Uh, and if people have any questions about other matchups, they can put them in the comments and yeah. I can answer them there. Awesome. Um, Prism, I run... You clicked Prism, right? Yes, yeah, looks like Prism. I believe so. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, this looks like Prism. Um, so in this matchup, I run the Clash of Agilities, not the Clash of Mites. So it's not like Dromai. So there is actually an attacking hero this time. <laughs> so you can yeah. clash with them. Uh, so if you if you um, put it into a herald, you will get the clash. Um, which which because like you can't clash with a dragon. You can't because uh, it says. Uh, oh, I see. Just the attacking the hero. The way it's worded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you yeah. Click it with the attacking hero, gotcha. so you don't clash gotcha. with dragons. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Regardless if you pop, regardless if you pop them or not, you mm -hmm. can't clash. Although you got to clash on E strike or something like that. But if you, trigger, if you trigger phantasm, you still get the clash. Yeah, you do clash. It's it's um you, that trigger still resolves. It doesn't it doesn't miss it doesn't miss or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, agility is kind of weird. Like you could still lose the clash with the prism. It's not really there. It's it's just a popper in this matchup. But um, in general, they can't really use the agility that well because they already have uh, again, Luminaris, Luminaris that gives them the yeah. It already gives them go again with that. So it's not like they're really doing much with the go again. Okay. So yeah. I'm kind of okay with putting in Clash in this matchup. Uh, pulping, very important in this matchup, because you need to... Mm -hmm. Getting Prism to, like, one or two health is very easy. Getting Prism to die is very hard. Okay. Uh, yeah. and, and that's because they have a lot of Spectral Shields. They have ALS. They mm -hmm. have uh, Genesis production for Spectral Shield. Uh, they they drag they drag with Angels, because they have Ward 4. Yeah, right. Uh, very hard to, to close push it through for the... Yeah, um... Send packing is pretty good because they often have a lot of hands that have a bunch of no blocks, right. at least one or two. <clears throat> so if you're able to like wild ride claw send packing with like tunic up or something like that, because uh, it usually you will need mm. tunic because it's a that's a it's two a three, cost three. Uh, that's two, a two two, 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 two three. three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So generally you you'll need the tunic for the send packing, but it's pretty good. I did send packing the prism player. I did play. Uh, that was my very last Swiss game. That was my winning in mm. was into prism. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, very very stressful matchup yeah. um yeah. and i won by the skin of my teeth as well i think it was like seven or something but i went off pulping but it was very very tight and i think the wild ride yellows are very important because you do need go against sources but the fact is you are going to want like blocking poppers in some of these right so yeah. and I, I didn't really know what prism was on if it was like iris or luminaris or model lag or whatever um so i just decided to run the yellow wild rides into that to just have like a go against source that I was able to go a little bit wider on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty much it. The game plan is really just like try to go face as much as you can with ALS. Try not to be greedy. Um, mm. By that I mean that if they're like ALSing your blood rush, just right. a lot of the times like you your decision is going to be roll scabs to try to like go mm. bonkers or yep. just hit the ALS. A lot of times you just want to hit the ALS. You really don't have to go that fast into okay. them. Uh, they start at lower life and they are susceptible to like a um, a grindier game plan. But I would say that you know if they're using if you're using a bunch of cards to ALS, it's generally just going to be they're going to be pa passing up after, and you're still get another crack and a bunch of damage. You don't need blood rush to kill them. It just helps. It just okay. helps essentially. Okay. But you don't really need it to kill them because they have a bunch of cards that don't block. If you let them hit and get figments out, then they get more ward. Yeah. 
it just makes it a little bit awkward, right? So okay. I'd say the key is don't be greedy and pray to God that your scabs rolls okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so relying on scabs a, a lot bit more of them, in this matchup. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of prisms are now running gambler's gloves uh, as KO tech oh, to funny. re-roll the scabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible if prism becomes relevant that I'm gonna, you're gonna have to Put ask KO run gamblers and stuff. Gamblers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have to because you do win or lose off scabs in this in okay. this um, because ALS will come. Yeah. It's just a matter of when. And if they do something like Genesis ALS, right. you have to scabs and hit both of those cards. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. So that that's probably something that like I would probably start adding gamblers to counter their to counter their gamblers yeah. or they're just to, like if their gamblers does nothing. I have gamblers myself if I miss right because if I if I miss it's real bad. Right. So. Right, right. That is something I yeah. would. Or start taking in potion. Um, not no, Epons, no, no, the no. other one. <laughs> no, no, no potions, no potions. No potions. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not worth. Don't need it. Um, cool. Okay, so that's a prison. Like, yeah. Those... Okay, so. I guess. Those are all the matchups that. Congrats again on making top four of the calling. That's that's amazing. Um, you said this was yeah. this, so. This is the best KO of the calling, <laughs> LA. And we have it's gold my, foil. my dynamo. Gold foil to dynamo. prove it. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. This very very the, good gold foil the... to get. Unfortunately, it wasn't yeah. a flesh bag. You'd probably play it if it was. Actually, I don't know if you would. But, uh... <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah, okay. I need to afford bills. You need to go to Japan. That's that's what you're doing. I need to go to Japan. I gotta pay for Universal Studios. Um, Expensive ticket. Yeah, I do want to thank, obviously, all my locals. We're super, super great to hang out with uh, Eli, <laughs> Lucas, Clay, Dale, all yeah. the all, all the guys there. Um, Ian and yep. made it very enjoyable. My teammates, uh, Team Group Ruffle, specifically Yuki, Viet, and Nia, helped a, a large amount, amount with not only testing notes, but helping kind of craft the deck. Mm -hmm. um, this this was based on one of Viet's builds, and I built upon it based on my personal preferences. So, like... It was very much like a team effort. I do feel very grateful to be on a uh, mm -hmm. on a team that I can call most, if not all of them, my like friends that I would happily spend time outside Hopefully of all. with. That yeah. I think is yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know who comes in and comes out nowadays. But yeah, <laughs> no, it's very open too, right? <laughs> yeah. Very open. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely appreciate all the all the insight and prep they helped me with. And uh, yeah, if if people have any questions about this deck, as far as like maybe the other matchups, I don't I don't really. I, I can I don't really want to write a tournament guide because I want to focus more on I'm uh, sorry like a tournament report because I want to focus more on like next iterations of this when like Droma is gone stuff yeah. like that like yeah. improvements but if people want something like that I can possibly do something or if they have specific questions about matchups I didn't go over right uh, whether I saw them or not uh, I can put in like I can I can reply to the comment but yeah other than that I think that's I think it's pretty much we'll do the outro awesome Let's try the outro. <laughs> like trying to pay. what's the retro sound like again all right well if you like this kind of video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and wherever you are in the world have a good morning good evening or a good afternoon bye for now <laughs>